very lucky today to have Trevor Hamilton. He's an expert in helping companies generate new business leads. He's actually the owner of More Meetings Now. And at this point, I'm going to pass it on to Trevor. Carla, thank you very much for introducing me. Um, and I really appreciate this opportunity to present. It's something that, uh, that I'm passionate about and something I'm very interested in and uh, very interested in helping each of you out with uh, that uh, by the end of this presentation uh, in a very short time that I can give you some keys to helping you be more successful in generating new leads and of course that meaning generating more business uh, for each of you because as small businesses um, we all need to get more business. So, uh, next please. Um, first of all, more meetings now. We are involved doing business to business. It's lead generation and lead nurturing. So that's going out and getting new leads, new people who are interested, and lead nurturing people who have demonstrated some interest of any sort, keeping them in touch with you. So when the timing is right, um, you are, or when you have something that can grab their attention, you are able to pull them into a conversation, into a sales conversation. Next, please. Next, um, outbound call, sorry, <laughs> I was talking to myself there, outbound calling. So outbound calling is one of the big pieces, getting on the phone, setting up sales appointments, setting up events for things like webinars like we're doing today, or doing some market analysis, really figuring out what's happening with the client. Next, please. Then we also go to the email marketing. How do you keep in touch with them regularly and through the events, the webinars, the seminars, and also being able to analyze a list. It's very important to be able to take a look and be able to segment a list, be able to manage a list to make sure that you're, you're uh, being able to be in touch with the right people at the right time. Next. And content generation. And really, when we're talking content generation, we're talking some of the old-fashioned brochures, case studies, white papers, and uh, website content, but also social media, because really social media is about content. If you're going to send a tweet, if you're going to send uh, do something in a blog, if you're going to do something on LinkedIn or Facebook, it's all about having the content to do that. Next, please. So. The word that I use that usually makes people cringe is cold calling. Okay, next. The re next slide, please. The reason why cold calling is, is because what do people think of cold calling? When you get a cold call at home, you normally know as soon as you get it that you had a cold call. And even at your business, you normally know you've got somebody who's poor, who's very poor at doing, at uh, read their reading. They are, uh, they don't seem to have any understanding of your business. But all they've got to do is actually make. Uh, they're doing a call. So cold calling gets tends to get a bad rap because of people who are not doing it very professionally. What I really want to talk today is how do you make an outbound call? We'll take out the word cold calling because that really makes people cringe, but how do you make a cold call? And next slide. How do you make an outbound call to start a new conversation? Doesn't matter whether it's an outbound call, whether it's a referral. Somebody says, hey, uh, I think there's somebody here who you should be speaking with, or you're at a networking event. It's a new conversation. And in a new conversation, we want to have that. And one of the big keys that we want to do is we want to qualify. Next, please. Okay. Secrets to new conversations. There's three. One, it's got to be simple. It's got to be interesting and relevant. And it's got to be a conversation. Normally, we're asking questions, and we are qualifying people we're talking to. People want to be qualified. When you're talking to them, they want to know that you're interested in talking with them if they're qualified. Next, please. Okay, so simple. Next, please. Sorry, the next, uh, thank you. Simple. Now, now let's talk about if you were to go back 12 or 15 years ago, there's a company by the name of AOL, now known as, as Yahoo. They were the leaders by far on the Internet. They were by far the leaders of anything to do with Internet. 
But you take a look even at a page that's come out recently, this is a page that's got a lot to it. If your mother or your grandmother wanted to do an online search, would you send them to Yahoo? No, you might send them to this next company. Next slide, please. You would send them to Google. Simple. Everybody knew exactly what Google was about. It was about a search engine. And that simplicity helped them to overpass it. By the way, Bing is also very simple. They've got nice pictures in the background, but their search engine has surpassed AOL as well. Simplicity is very important. And it's very important in simplicity when you're having those conversations because people want, people need to be able to understand. If they don't understand what we're talking about, they start to tune out and they don't want to look stupid. Keep it simple and conversations can happen. Next, please. Okay, keep it short, keep it simple. Okay, um, it's really important that we keep it short and keep it simple, especially in the introductions. And our next slide, please. It needs to be interesting and relevant. Okay, we can't be on talking about what everybody else is talking about. Business owners, executives, uh, have heard all of the same stuff for many years. What they want to talk about is things that get them thinking, that get their creative juices flowing, and things that are relevant to the issues that they're dealing with today. Next slide, please. Okay. We want to be able to, you need to understand who you're talking to. It's not just, not everybody's the same. They want to know that you're thinking about them differently. You, they don't, you don't want to sound like everybody else sounds. And you need to do a little bit of research if you can. I'm not talking tons of research, but even something to show that you've done a little bit of research. People expect that today. Next, please. Be conversational. People don't want to be talked at. I'm doing a presentation right now. I'm talking at all of you right now. But... People don't expect that if you're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, if you're actually doing a sale. They need to be involved. Next, please. Okay. Ask questions. Find out what their interests are and qualify them. Next, please. Okay. Now, I want to go through a couple of different things, a couple of different ways in which you can introduce a, a, a conversation with your uh, it's a referral, whether it's a, a new outbound call, or whether you've meeting somebody at a, a networking event. Here's a classic introduction. Hi, my name is Trevor Hamilton from Small Business Solvers. We help small businesses to be more successful. And we have a powerful tool for small businesses to get the resources that they need. We are working with businesses and business incubators across North America. You can get access to this for only $40 a month. Now, that's a classic introduction for a cold call. It's okay. Um, it's not great, but it's okay. And uh, in some cases, for some things, this actually works really well. It works really well when there's very few competitors out there and you have something truly truly unique uh, that people need and know that they're needing right away. But for most things, this is actually a recipe for having a, uh, for not really engaging people, whether you're making an outbound call or, uh, or you're doing a new referral. Here's another one, and, and I'm going to tell you the, the uh, this is a, a new presentation for me, but about six weeks ago, I did a presentation on this, and we're, uh, we're actually talking about the, inter the, I'm going to tell you here a little bit um, about a technique that I've used that I've gotten excellent feedback where I know people have doubled the number of meetings they get inside salespeople who are making outbound calls, when they've changed to use this technique, they have doubled results. So here's the issue centered one. Hi, my name is Trevor from Small Business Solvers. Can I grab you for a moment, please? I always think it's really important to actually
actually start by asking a question and being polite. Sometimes you get people on the phone and they're just running off to a meeting. They don't have time to talk to you at all. Being polite can go a long way. And most of the time they will say, mm, okay. And you get a little bit of time there. So let's continue here. Let me just confirm. You're the owner of, of a small business, correct? Next slide, please. Okay. See, I'm qualifying. We help small businesses to be successful. Let me give you a couple concerns that we're helping our clients with today. First one. How do I help make sure my business is not only survives, but it grows? Second one, where do I find mentors to help my business to be successful? And three, how do I reduce my costs? Next slide, please. Okay, now we're getting ask another question. You've got that. Hopefully, you've got their attention now. Where are you getting your advice for your business today, for your planning, for your sales, for your finance, for your operations, for legal? Where is a small, person, a small business person going to go to get all of this kind of different advice? Well, small business advisors is an I think, but it's starting that conversation of getting them to admit that they are looking for that. Would you be interested in a single resource that won't break your bank? Then uh, that's when we can even start talking about how little the uh, solution that Small Business Solvers is. And I use the sample of Small Business Solvers. I could use just about any example here, but I thought it was important to use one that everybody here should at least have a look at the Small Business Solvers site. Some of you I know are clients and uh, and uh, I think it's actually a great service. It's something that I'm looking at right now as well. So um, I'm really uh, something I'm actually quite excited about as I look a little deeper into it. Next slide, please. Okay. So I'm just finishing off here, and I want to say it's important to plan ahead. Start thinking about how to introduce yourself, the questions you need to ask. Because if you don't, you may end up somewhere that you don't want to end up. But most of all, next slide. Sometimes you just need to do it. Get out there. Uh, make some calls. Don't be afraid of the phone. Follow up on those referrals that are given. Head to those networking events and start to really get to know people out there who are interested in what you do. And finally, more meetings now. We help companies who are selling business to business to generate more leads and nurture the leads they have today. Any questions? Hi, that was great. So we did have some questions actually that uh, we had submitted from registration. The first one I would love to throw out there uh, is how can you be more efficient as a salesperson? Do you have any tactics there? Well, actually, I think part of the efficiency comes in uh, where I was talking about right today was the questions that are asked. Because there's some of you might be familiar with BANT, B-A-N-T, Budget, Authority, Need, and Timing. Those are the kinds of things you need to understand. You need to understand, do these people have budget to make a purchase? Do they have need? If they don't have a need and they don't have budget, the, the uh, question of them buying is, uh, is pretty slim. Do they have the authority to do so? Do they have the timing? So that's just, you know, if you just take a look at BANT, budget, authority, need, and timing. If you can get those questions answered in your first conversation, you're going to have an idea whether or not that, that uh, company you're talking to, that person you're talking to, can actually purchase. And uh, especially with small businesses where they don't have a lot of experience, uh, just having somebody who's interested in talking to them is pretty exciting. They're excited about their business. But what we really need to do is manage our time better to make sure that we are meeting with people who are actually interested and can make a purchase because they have the budget, and they have the need, they have the authority, and the timing is right. I really like that. That's great. Um, the other thing, uh, the other question that I know everyone has is how, 
do you have any closing tactics to help? I mean, I really like the fact that you started with making it conversational, building the relationship, because I've just read studies showing that 90% close is actually the follow-up. So I think that that's a really great starting point. But do you have any other closing tactics for us? Well, I would actually come back right to what I was just talking about. With the information that you're given, you are, if they have budget, need, authority, and the timing, you've actually been given points to actually help close. So if you're going to close, you can say, you told me that you needed uh, a system to help you run your business better and more effectively, that today you don't have anybody helping you in the area of finance, in the area of sales, in the area of operations. And then that all of that stuff could be helpful to you. And uh, that you don't have that resource right now for only $40 a month, it makes it pretty easy, no-brainer.